Hi everybody, good to see you again. And we're continuing in Jeremiah, and we're in that section that is judgments on Judah. So we're gonna do 42 through 45 that will finish that up. And then after that, we'll get into judgments on the nations. Then all the commanders of the forces of Johanan, the son of Kareah, and Jezaniah, the son of Hoshaiah, and all the people from the least to the greatest came near and said to Jeremiah the prophet, Let our plea for mercy come before you and pray to the Lord your God for us, for all this remnant, because we are left with but a few as your eyes sees, that the Lord your God may show us the way we should go and the thing that we should do. Jeremiah the prophet said to them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray to the Lord your God. Now he's saying your God should be their God according to your request. And whatever the Lord answers you, I will tell you. I will keep nothing back from you. Then they said to Jeremiah, May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not accept according to all the word with the Lord your God sends you to us. Whether it's good or bad, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we are sending you, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. Okay, now they're saying our God. At the end of ten days, the word of the Lord came back to Jeremiah. Then he summoned Johanan, the son of Kareah, and all the commanders of the forces, who were with him and all the people from the least to the greatest. It wasn't just the kings and their officials, but it was all the people too, and it's the same today. And said to them, Thus says the Lord God, the God of Israel, to whom you sent me to present your plea for mercy before him. If you will remain in this land, then I will build you up and not pull you down. I will plant you and not pluck you up, for I relent of the disaster that I did to you. See, God turns back from his disaster too when you turn to him. Do not fear the king of Babylon. Well, that's a good one. We're supposed to fear God. Don't fear earthly men of whom you are afraid. Do not fear him, declares the Lord, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. I will grant you mercy that he may have mercy on you and let you remain in your own land. But if you say we will not remain in this land, disobeying the voice of the Lord your God and saying, no, we will go to the land of Egypt where we shall not see war or hear the sound of the trumpet or be hungry for bread. Yeah, see, you can't go by the cravings of your carnal stomach, can you? But we will dwell there, then hear the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, If you set your face to enter Egypt and go and live there, well, you got to watch where you're setting your face to, right? In Egypt, remember what God called Egypt before? He called them a house of slavery. Then the sword that you fear shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and famine, of which you are afraid, shall follow close after you to Egypt. Wow. No, you want uh, goodness and mercy following you all the days of your life, like it says in Psalm 23, not uh, the sword and famine. And there you shall die. Yeah, they will die in that house of slavery. All the men whom set their faces to go to Egypt to live there shall die by the sword, by famine, by, and by pestilence. Wow, how many times do we see that? Sword, famine, and pestilence. All right, they shall have no remnant or survivor from the disaster that I will bring upon them. Uh, now, God does bring disaster. He brought disaster before Christ, and 40 years after Christ, He brought that disaster on Jerusalem and the temple. Now, He will take down every temple that isn't of God. God made a new temple. Precious stones fit together as the temple that He dwells in, a people. And that's what he exalted. That's what Abraham was looking forward. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as my anger and my wrath were poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so my wrath will be poured out on you when you go to Egypt. You shall become an excretion. Well, that's a pronounced curse is what that is. A horror, a curse, a taunt. You shall see this place no more. The Lord has said to you, O remnant of Judah, do not go to Egypt. Know for certainty that I have warned you this day that you have gone astray at the cost of your lives. So God doesn't call us to go astray. 
For you sent me to the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us to the Lord our God, and whatever the Lord our God says, declare to us, and we will do it. And I have this day declared it to you, but you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God in anything that he sent me to tell you. Well, here he is, the prophet of God, uh, the man with the true word. He tells it to him, and he's saying, You don't obey it. Now, therefore... Know for a certainty that you shall die by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence in the place where you desire to go and live. So, look, it's God's will be done, not our will. They're being led by their desires. And who else is led by his desires? It's the devil. And if they're going to follow the devil, if the devil's going to be their father, they're just going to be led by their desires. And the devil can easily manipulate you with desires. And uh, that's why you see, um, well, people do it like it says, from the lowest to the highest, from uh, common people. Uh, that's why you see, even in churches sometimes, some of these people are not following God, they're following the devil. All right, chapter 43. When Jeremiah finished speaking to all the people, all these words of the Lord their God, with which the Lord their God has sent him to them, Azariah the son of Hoshaiah and Johanan, the son of Kareah, and all the insolent, or arrogant and proud, men said to Jeremiah, You are telling a lie. Okay, wow. After Jeremiah, the one appointed by God with the truth, speaks to them, they're saying this, You are telling a lie. So they're, they're accusing Jeremiah of being a liar. The Lord our God did not send you to say. Okay, so now they're saying, you are not sent by God. Uh, <laughs> isn't this funny? And you got to laugh at this because if you have ever continued with the Lord, you probably are going to be told this too. You're going to be told that you're lying and you're not a man of God. You haven't sent by, been sent by God. So that's the devil speaking and we should know that. Do not go to Egypt to live there, but Baruch, the son of Neriah, has sent you against us. Uh, so here Baruch... See, there's two people that were helping Jeremiah. Baruch, he was a scribe, writing stuff down. And then Eben uh, Melech, he was the other guy, the Ethiopian that pulled him out of the pit. Well, so he's got two guys. Thank God he's got two guys to uh, help, help him um, and uh, encourage him in the Lord. Uh, and Baruch, you know, he had a career there he could have followed. And he could have satisfied his career, but he risked everything. And now they've come against him too. Uh, but, you know, God calls us. He says, unless you forsake all that you have, you can't be my disciple. Now, I wanted to look at John 8, 44. Let's look at that real quick. You are of your father, the devil. Now, this is Jesus talking to them at his time. And uh, these leaders, religious, and uh, they want to be the heads political. Well, God's saying, yeah, you are not following Abraham. You are your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and doesn't stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. All right. Well, he's a liar. There's no truth in him. So, yeah, don't be uh, ignorant of the devices of the devil there uh, because these guys are just following the desires of their father, the devil from Baruch against us to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans that they may kill us or take us into exile in Babylon. So Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the commanders of the forces of the people did not obey the voice of the Lord. So look at that. We've got Johanan, the commanders, and all the people. So it doesn't matter who you have with you. I don't care if you have a whole bunch of commanders. You better follow Jesus Christ and what he's saying and not the rest of them. Obey the voice of the Lord to remain in the land of Judah. But Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the commanders of the forces took all the remnant of Judah who had returned to live in the land of Judah from all the nations to which they had been driven, the men, the women, the children, the princesses, and every person whom Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahiakim, son of Shaphan, also Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neriah. So see what they did? And they came into the land of Egypt, for they did not obey the voice of the Lord, and they arrived at Taphanes. So this is where uh, Jeremiah and Baruch get taken into Egypt, which they actually didn't really want to go there either. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and Taphanes, Take in your hand 
uh, great stones. And uh, another word that that can mean is proud. So I don't know if, if it if proud is part of that when it says these great stones because they were proud themselves. But he says take these large stones and hide them in the mortar and the pavement that is at the entrance of the Pharaoh's palace in Taphnes in the sight of the men of Judah and say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and I will set his throne above these stones that I have hidden, and he will spread his royal canopy over them. He shall come and strike the land of Egypt, giving over to the pestilence those who are doomed to the pestilence, to captivity those who are doomed to captivity, and to the sword those who are doomed by the sword. I shall kindle a fire in the temples of the gods of Egypt. Wow, isn't that something? Every temple that is not of the Lord is going to be burnt down. That's why God burnt the temple in Jerusalem. And like we said, he made another temple that is made by God, that temple that is made of precious stones, people that he dwells in. And so we got to dwell in him and he in us. So I shall kindle fire in the temples of the gods of Egypt, and he shall burn them and carry them away captive, and he shall clean the land of Egypt as a shepherd Well, he wraps himself in a cloak. Now this, in the English Standard Version, it says something totally different here, but it says that the shepherd cleans his cloak of vermin, and he shall go away from there in peace. He shall break the obelisks of Heliopolis, which is in the land of Egypt, and the temples of the gods of Egypt shall burn with fire. All right, Jeremiah 44. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the Judeans who lived in the land of Egypt at Migdal, and that means tower, at Taphanes, at Memphis, and in the land of Pathros. Yeah, Memphis just isn't Tennessee, but Egypt also. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You have seen all the disaster that I brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. Behold, this day they are a desolation. So here God is telling them, look, Jerusalem's a desolation. Just like Jesus told them that your house has been left to you desolate and 40 years later it was destroyed. And no one dwells in them because of the evil that they committed. So here they were committing evil following their father, the devil, following and doing his desires. Okay, they committed the evil, provoking me to anger in that they went to make offerings and serve other gods that they knew not neither they nor you nor your fathers. Yet uh, rising early and sending to you all my servants, the prophet saying, Oh, do not do this abomination that I hate. But they didn't listen or incline their ear to turn from evil. Yeah, you got to guard your ear, right? And your eyes. And make no offerings to other gods. Therefore, my wrath and my anger were poured out and kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. And they became a waste and a desolation as at this day. And now, thus says the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, Why do you commit this great evil against yourselves, to cut off from you man and woman, infant and child, from the midst of Judah, leaving you no remnant? See, these people are cutting their self. They're mad like ravaging animal devouring itself. And, you know, that's what... Um, uh, Oh, dang, what's his name? The Jewish historian Josephus. That's what he said about his own people when Jerusalem was getting destroyed 70 years or 40 years after Jesus at 70 AD. Wow. So they're doing the same thing. Why do you provoke me to anger with the works of your hands, making offerings to other gods in the land of Egypt, where you have come to live so that you may be cut off and become a curse, a taunt among all the nations of the earth? Have you forgotten the evil of your fathers, the evil of the kings of Judah, the evil of their wives, your own evil, and the evil of your wives? Well, it says evil of the wives a couple times here. Which they committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, that they have not humbled themselves even to this day. Well, God lifts up the humble, doesn't he? But he comes against the proud, and these guys are proud. Nor have they feared, nor walked, in my law and my statutes that I set before you and before your fathers. 
Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for your harm, to cut off all Judah. I will take the remnant of Judah who have set their faces to come to the land of Egypt to live. Wow, you think you're going to live in a house of slavery? No, God has given us freedom that we should live in Him, His Son, a faithful friend. And they shall all be consumed in the land of Egypt. They shall fall by the sword and by famine, and they shall be consumed from the least to the greatest. Yeah, see, this isn't just the politicians. This is the least to the greatest. So if you don't like the politicians, uh, well, there's probably people that's following along the same way, and they want to follow that way also. But, uh, you know, that's where we got to stick with Christ and His kingdom. The kingdom of God is far different than nations of the world. All right, so from the least to the greatest, they shall die by the sword, by famine, and they shall become an oath, a horror, a curse, and a taunt. I will punish those who dwell in the land of Egypt, as I have punished Jerusalem with the sword, with famine, and with pestilence, so that none of the remnant of Judah who have come to live in the land of Egypt shall escape or survive or return to the land of Judah, to which they desire to return to dwell there. For they shall not return except some fugitives. So they'll have very few that are going to return. Then all the men who knew that their wives had made offerings to other gods, and all the women who stood by a great assembly, all the people who lived in Pathros in the land of Egypt, answered Jeremiah. Okay, this will be interesting to see what they say back to Jeremiah. As for the word that you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you. Man, I can't believe. Here they were crying for mercy. Uh, and I guess they just wanted their own desire. But then when he tells them, oh, we're not going to listen to you. But we will do everything that we have vowed. Make offerings to the Queen of Heaven. So their offerings are to the Queen of Heaven. This is what they were doing in Jerusalem. Yeah, no wonder Jesus said, your house has been left to you desolate. No wonder Ezekiel, God had to show Ezekiel what they were doing in the secret places. And this is what they were doing offerings to the queen of heaven and pour out drink offerings to her there they probably uh, had some t-shirts i'm with her well <laughs> there you need to have uh, one that says i'm with him jesus christ right not her and pour out drink offerings to her as we did both we and our fathers our kings and our officials in the cities of judah and in the streets of jerusalem for then we had plenty of food Okay, this is what they were looking at, their stomachs. They're following the stomach. So they had plenty of food. They prospered. Okay, they're following prosperity. So see, isn't this something, this prosperity doctrine has been around a long time. This is 586 years before Jesus. And we saw no disaster. No, they don't want to see disaster. They want plenty and they want prosperity, uh, but not the prosperity of God. They wanted to be delivered from the Romans at the time of Jesus. They didn't want to be delivered from their sin. But since we left off making offerings to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, oh, they keep going, we have lacked everything and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. And the women said, okay, here's the women uh, piping up again. <laughs> that makes me think why Paul said uh, that some of them need to be quiet. They were probably so proud and they wouldn't shut their mouths to even hear where Paul said, you need to ask your husband at home. Because uh, they probably were very proud, and that's, that's why. But, of course, women are teaching and they are prophesying the word, but God doesn't appoint them to be heads over the men. God has got an order for every one of us to be, be submitted to Jesus Christ. And it's not easy whether you're a child, a wife, or a husband. Or single. It's not easy that way either, but we got to continue to follow God faithfully. So anyway, the women said, When we made offerings to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, was it without our husband's approval? Well, yeah, these husbands are going right along with it, right? That we made cakes for her bearing her image and poured out drink offerings to her. So they pour out drink offerings to her. That, that reminds me because a uh, long time ago I was in some places before I turned to the Lord where, uh, yeah, I took some uh, Indians, some stuff, coca leaves, dynamite, cigarettes, and uh, they were given offerings to the devil and Mother Earth inside these caverns, deep, dark, uh, where uh, thousands of people died in there uh, from mining. 
and yeah, you could die in there. It was like Swiss cheese, but you go in there with a lantern with rocks that you uh, put some water in and then the gas is released and it lights up and you can go in there. But I wasn't with the Lord at the time, but uh, yeah, I know what it is like when they're pouring drink offerings out to uh, devils, but hey, God will save you. He will take you out of that, give you a new heart and the Holy Spirit and uh, righteous boldness to lead others in righteousness, right? Then Jeremiah said to all the people, men and women, all the people who had given him this answer, as for the offerings that you offered in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your officials and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them? Did it not come into his mind? The Lord could no longer bear your evil deeds and the abominations that you committed. Wow, see, that's how God is good. It's the goodness of God that He has uh, not destroyed us all, right? He has still given us time. But uh, His wrath is going to come and His judgment will come. So we need to be faithful to Him. Therefore, your land has become a desolation and a waste and a curse without inhabitant as it is this day. It is because you made offerings and because you sinned against the Lord and did not obey the voice of the Lord or walk in His laws, in His statutes, in His testimonies, that this disaster has, ha has happened to you at this day. Jeremiah said to all the people and all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah who are in the land of Egypt. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You, your wives, have declared with your mouths, and have fulfilled it with your hands. So they declare and they fulfill with their mouth and their hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have made to make offerings to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings to her. Then confirm your vows and perform your vows. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, all you of Judah who dwell in the land of Egypt. Wow, so he's saying, Hey, go on, go ahead, keep keep doing it. Behold, I have sworn by my great name, says the Lord, that my name shall no more be invoked by the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Egypt, saying, As the Lord God lives, behold, I am watching over them for disaster, not for good. All the men of Judah who are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword, by famine, until there is an end of them. And those who escape the sword shall return from the land of Egypt to the land of Judah, few in number, and all the remnant of Judah who came to the land of Egypt to live shall know whose word will stand, mine or theirs. This shall be the sign to you, declares the Lord. We'll know whose word is going to stand, mine or theirs. Well, let's look at Ephesians 6.10. Okay, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Yeah, it goes back to the schemes of the devil. And we got to stand. For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers. This is uh, powers in the heaven, cosmic powers, over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Wow, that's great. We got to stand firm, don't we? And we got the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. I will punish you in this place in order that you may know that my words will surely stand against you for harm. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hand of the enemies. Pharaoh Hophra, do you remember? Okay, we had Pharaoh Necho the second. He killed Josiah at Megiddo. That's Armageddon. Uh, because... Necho was going up over to Assyria and so Josiah the good king went up there to block him because he was sticking with Babylon. Egypt was going up to Assyria and they were going to league together against Babylon but they killed Josiah. And then after Necho too you had Psalmtik too and then after that that's when you had uh, Pharaoh Apres or Hophra he's called. And that's who God say uh, he's going to be going down to. So I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies and into the hand of those who seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, who was his enemy and sought his life. All right, Jeremiah 45. Praise God. The sun's 
gone. I don't see any sun, but we still got light. So it reminds me of in Revelations, it says that uh, they're not going to be in need of the sun because uh, God is the light that's going to be with us there. So praise God. The word that Jeremiah the prophet spoke to Baruch. Now remember, Baruch is a scribe that is with Jeremiah. He could have had a prosperous uh, life, a prosperous job as a scribe and been taken care of, but he decided to go with the man of God and uh, <laughs> ended up all the people came against him. But uh, anyway, this is talking to him. To Baruch, the son of Neriah, when he wrote these words in a book at the dictation of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, to you, O Baruch, you said, Woe is me, for the Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with groaning, and I find no rest. Thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, Behold, what I have built I am breaking down, and what I have planted I am plucking up. That is the whole land. And do you seek great things for yourself? Okay, so here he's saying with all of this, don't seek great things for yourself. See, that can bring us back into just what he was saying, woe is me. If we're trying to seek great things for ourselves, yeah, woe is me, for the Lord has added sorrow to my pain. I am weary with groanings, I find no rest. And do you seek great things for yourself? Seek them not. For behold, I am bringing disaster upon all flesh. So it's not only these people that he had built up as a flock, but it's going to be all flesh that he's going to do this to, declares the Lord. But I will give you your life as a prize of war in all places to which you may go. Wow, so uh, if we want our life, because there's a war going on, there's a spiritual battle going on. And, uh, you know, Luke 14, Jesus said, look, you got to count the costs ahead of time. And then he goes on to talk about being his disciples. Unless you forsake everything you have, you cannot be my disciple. And uh, let's look at 2 Corinthians 10, 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we don't wage wars according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Now, I don't like it as much in the ESV as I do the New King James Version, actually. Uh, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised up against the knowledge of God. So there's going to be all these, you know, it says that we should have an answer. Study to show yourself approved. Be ready in season and out of season and have an answer. Everything that raises itself up against the knowledge of Christ and take every thought into captivity and obey Christ. Yeah, even these thoughts that come into our head, you got to take those into captivity and obey Christ. Being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Now what is that saying? Be ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Well, I don't know exactly, but it makes me think of when Jesus is saying that we got to take the log out of our eye first then we can judge, have righteous judgment to help a brother. Because, you know, a lot of people say, don't judge. Well, it doesn't say that you're not to judge, but you're not to be a hypocritical judge. And, uh, yeah, we see hypocrites all the time, and we see them uh, all over the place. Everybody sees what hypocrite is. But we got to admit there's hypocrites everywhere. It's not just hypocrites in re religion. It's hypocrites... Uh, where there's not religion, it's not just hypocrites with uh, politicians, but it's hypocrites with people also. But we're going to continue to follow Christ and uh, keep going with Him. Stay on that narrow path because He's going to lead you in the path of righteousness. Uh, he doesn't want to lead you to destruction, does He? But He wants for you a path that's uh, righteous because um, uh, He's going to come back and judge. And when He does, He's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant.